The purpose of this course is to give you an exposure to some of the issues that are of importance to high performance computing. We try to present material in a way that is accessible to a broad audience, including people with only limited background in computer science or computer engineering. As we expose you to parallelizing matrix matrix multiplication with OpenMP, we try to give you a conceptual understanding that does not require a deep knowledge of computer architecture and operating systems. Our hope is that this will lead you to pursue those subjects more deeply and that the exercises will give you experience that you can use to better understand those subjects when you do. Let's use the example from this week's launch to explain a bit about cores and threads of execution. So far, you have used a single core of a processor to compute a matrix-matrix multiplication. Think of the core as the hardware that performs that computation. We depict the registers, the L1 cache and the L2 cache as part of that core, since a core always has its own registers and L1 cache, and it usually has its own L2 cache as well. Beyond that, there is an L3 cache, which is shared with other cores of the same processor, as is the main memory. The program you write is compiled into an executable and that executable code is stored in memory. We picture that here as the triple nested loop we discussed many times before. The data on which this operates is also in memory, in our case, the three matrices. Somewhere in memory, the three loop indices i, j, and p are also stored, as are other variables that are encountered. How can we make a processor twice as fast? give it two cores instead of one. Now, we could then simply execute two different programs or two copies of the same program, one on each of the cores. We could have each program perform a different matrix-matrix multiplication. But in this course, we want to make a single matrix-matrix multiplication fast, so we really want both cores to compute on the same data. If we do that blindly, by executing copies of the matrix-matrix multiplication on each core, then each element in C gets updated by each copy of the program. And that means you will likely not get the right answer since you're updating C twice with the product A times B. There are other issues with different programs computing with the same data, but we will get into that later. If we go back to the original program, we notice that the outermost loop is indexed by I. We remember that that means that each iteration of the outer loop updates a row of C. The update of each row is completely independent. So, if we have two cores, we could run two programs, one on each core, that each update half of the rows. Notice again that each of these programs requires its own copies of I, J, and P to be stored in memory. What we want to notice here is that the first copy of the program starts i at 0 and then skips every other i and therefore computes all the even rows. If we look on the, at the program on the right, we notice that it starts indexing at 1. Again, it skips every other row, but that means that it computes all of the odd rows. Now, since there are two cores computing simultaneously, the order in which rows are computed is more likely like this although not necessarily completely in lockstep. Both cores can execute the same program if we separate out just a few things. The ability to know which copy of the program is to be executed. There are two, so we can index the parts as 0 and 1. We also need to give each of the parts its own copy of variables i, j, and p. Now we can use the same program where how the program executes is affected by its index. This roughly describes the concept of a thread. The information private to each thread is in these boxes. How many threads there are is also known somewhere here in variable n threads. The private variable TID is the thread ID, which equals 0 or 1, depending on which part is to be executed. The same program is now executed by each thread but how the program executes is determined by which thread is executing it, the data that is private to the thread, and the data that is shared, in the matrices in this case. Now, if we have four cores, we may want to use four threads. Notice that these four threads can all execute the same program. 
Notice that the change in the program is very systematic. If it is systematic, the compiler should be able to do it for us. This is where OpenMP comes in. The line pound pragma OMP parallel 4 is a directive to the compiler to create code that does what we just described in the last slide. The fact that i, j, and p are declared inside of the scope of the pragma, which is the next command and hence the entire triple nested loop, means that each thread gets a private copy. Setting OMP num threads equals 4 before execution indicates that four threads are to be created by a parallel section like this. It is usually not necessary for there to be as many cores as there are threads. Here we depict the situation where there are only two cores but four threads. The operating system then timeshares the four threads to the two cores. One thing is that the operating system may decide to move a thread from one core to another unless one quote-unquote binds a thread to a specific core. Because moving a thread from one core to another involves moving data, this may be undesirable. We have seen that moving data incurs overhead. Going forward in this course, we are going to assume that we have fewer threads than cores and that the threads don't move between cores. As far as programming what we just described, all we need is the OpenMP pragma and the environment variable OMP num threads. So from here on, we are going to focus on the programming.